Hello everybody, this is your host Relia Pratch, and today I'm going to be taking a quiz called Who is your Skelebay? <laughs> Which skeleton in the Undertale multiverse would want to date me? I'm, I have no idea what to expect, but you can probably guess who I'm hoping for, who I'm hoping my honey might be. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to just jump right into it. I'm already blushing. Oh no. Okay. Question one. If you had to pick an Undertale alternate universe to come from, which would you choose? Undertale, Underswap, Underfell, Swapfell, Horror Tale, Underlust, Farm Tale, Outer Tale, Mafia Tale, Dance Tale. I can't decide. Oh boy, that's a lot of options, but Underswap is my choice. It just, it's really wholesome and <laughs> <laughs> my my top pick is there. Next. You've been turned into a cat for 24 hours. What do you do? I don't know, man. Can cats cry? <laughs> I'm allergic to myself now. Time to die. No, I'm not allergic. The rest of my family is, but I'm not. Time to test just how strong catnip is. Oh boy. Uh, is this 420? I become an internet sensation in minutes. I work that camera talk to my cat, get bullied by my cat. So I'm a cat getting bullied by my cat. I don't have one. I accidentally get adopted by some kid and worry about the repercussions when I turn back. <laughs> I spend the whole day on a fence screaming obscenities at people just because I can. That's not really me. Sleep. Hide myself. No one can see me like this. Sleep. I was just saying to my mom earlier, she was petting my hair, and I was like, I feel like a cat because I'm about to fall asleep whenever you do that. <laughs> what is your love language giving? So the love language I show to other people. Verbal affirmation. I love to give out compliments. Pick up lines. Popping those babies like candy. What? <laughs> Physical affection. I need cuddles and I need them now. Quality time. Why are you running? Why are you running? <laughs> That's an interesting way to phrase that. Giving gifts. I saw this weirdly shaped rock at the thought of you. <laughs> Acts of service. If I do the dishes for you, just know I have a ring ready. Whoa, okay. You, you may want to wait a little longer <laughs> for that sort of commitment. The way I feel loved is receiving gifts, but the way I love other people would probably be... Well, the way verbal affirmation is phrased, I don't... I don't do pickup lines. I, I have no experience flirting. <laughs> um, so my second choice would probably be quality time. Pick a boomer humor quote. Oh boy, these are long. Before you criticize someone, you should walk a mile in their shoes. That way, when you criticize them, you're a mile away from them and you have their shoes. <laughs> That's petty. When your mother asks, do you want a piece of advice, it's a mere formality. It doesn't matter if you answer yes or no, you're going to get it anyway. I mean, I appreciate my mom's advice. I walk around like everything's fine, but deep down, inside my shoe, my sock is sliding off. <laughs> that was my brother when he was younger. Every single time we were on a long walk, he would say, wait, I have to pull up my socks. There's nothing simpler than avoiding people you don't like. Avoiding one's friends, that's the real test. Yes! Downton Abbey! Okay, I don't even need to see any of the others. That's... that's mine. <laughs> Introvert... life... yo! <laughs> D delete that. Delete that. Cringe. Pick a good scent. Rain on grass. The ocean. Gasoline from the auto shop. Freshly baked bread recently washed sheets, drying paint on the walls, fresh flowers in a vase, fallen fruit baking in the sun, a blazing campfire, or the expensive musk of perfume. I do like the smell of gasoline, but only from the Disneyland trams. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because that's the first smell that always greeted me in my childhood whenever I went to Disneyland. But I think rain on grass is one that I come across more often, I say, as I live in the desert, but yeah, I really like the smell of rain. 
Pick a bad scent. Oh boy. Old people. I won't say their smell is bad. Most of the time it's just, like, different. Badly burnt popcorn. Oh boy. Yeah. Somehow, I managed to burn my popcorn and then, well, it's a long story, but somehow burnt popcorn ended up scattered in the recesses of my fridge. <laughs> you, you don't want to know what happened that night. <laughs> the fresh musk of a public bathroom. Oh, the mouse in the walls, cat food, a sweaty locker room, vinegar, cigarette smoke, really old vegetables, or that super fishy smell from dead ocean. Ugh. Um, probably the bathroom. Choose an unconventional D&D character. I'm not very experienced with D&D, but I will try. The angry healer who casts emotional damage with every hit point restored. Oh no! So you get trauma in return for your health? Three kobolds in a trench coat masquerading as a dragonborn. A bear that everyone thinks is a druid, but in reality is just a bear. That scene from Prince Caspian, when Lucy approaches the bear and almost gets her face eaten. The angsty teen bard who only plays My Chemical Romance. A human with dwarfism who's trying to masquerade as an actual dwarf. Uh-oh. You're liable to get killed for that. Well, depending on the dwarfs. A chaotic evil character with an OP weapon that only allows them to do good deeds. Huh. Interesting. A lawful good tiefling paladin whose patron demon dad is just trying to support their kid's weird hobby. A barbarian that's a really just a nice guy and not all that angry. A necromancer that thinks they're just a really good doctor. Or Florida man. Hmm. I don't, I don't know if I'm worthy of Florida man's particular brand of chaos. I think I'll go with the necromancer, who just thinks they're a really good doctor. <laughs> What's a quality you look for in a significant other? Communication. I want someone who's good with their words. Financial stability. I want to know that I'm taken care of. That is important, as someone who's disabled. Family. I want someone who will focus on the loved ones around us. Peace. I want someone that I don't have to watch myself around. Oh, interesting. Intelligence. I want someone who makes me think and keeps me engaged. Beauty. I want a partner that always draws my eyes to them. Energy. I want to be kept on my toes, someone who keeps me moving. No. <laughs> no. No thanks. Humor. I want to be entertained to smile with them. Spark. I want someone alluring, someone who can warm me up with just their words. Spark. Is that how you interpret that? Strength. I want someone who impresses me, someone who can make me feel small and protected. That's hard. I do appreciate humor. I like this definition of spark too. I do worry a lot about financial stability. I am very frugal. I don't like to spend on myself. So it would be nice to know that that's a consistent stability. I, I don't have to be anxious about that. And Financial stability means that if they want, my partner can spoil me. And I do like receiving gifts. Pick an awkward moment from my dogs. Uh-oh. He puked on my dad's bed in front of him, just stared him in the eye and let it loose. Oh no. The audacity, the confidence. She has to spend 30 times just to take a leak. The grass is the same everywhere, girl. Just pick a spot and go. That's my dog. He likes to eat in my parents' room, but the kibble's in the pantry. He'll grab a mouthful and literally walk across the whole house and repeat, that's so much work! You think you have to work for your meal? She screams at squeaky toys, smacks them with her paw, then just yells at the sky. <laughs> he gets so mad when the bathroom door is closed while you go. He, you can see the bottom of his nose on the doorway, sniffing away. Okay, that's kind of cute though. You like seeing the little snoot under the door, <laughs> under the crack in the door. She likes to sunbathe, but has black fur, so she cooks herself. Oh no! She always smells like fried chicken after her morning tan. He growls for attention. Look at me, I'm intimidating you into loving me. 
Sundere dog. She's a pampered little princess who refuses to sit on the hardwood floor. If you give her the sit command there, her little butt will hover an inch off the floor. Oh, <laughs> a rebel. He knows he's not allowed to bark inside, but sometimes he just can't help it. So he does this little half bark that sounds like a chicken barking. <laughs> if you're in bed and she wants in, she'll literally scratch your face until you lift the covers. So entitled. Oof, I wouldn't want that. Um, my dog is not allowed to sleep with me. He'd crush me. I would suffocate. <laughs> um, I think I'll go with the snoot under the bathroom door. <laughs> Pick a memory of my school days. A group of kids setting a black widow on fire with the lighter they bummed off the music teacher. Sounds like the music teacher was a rebel too. Making brony fan art for five bucks a pop. I had to stop after one guy asked for... Okay, moving on. The mean cat girl who would hiss at me and scratch the boys that suddenly became super popular my freshman year. I mean, was that when the furry emergence started happening? The ginger kid who would call me cracker all the time till I told him I was half Mexican. Then he called me toast because he didn't know any Mexican slurs. The football players who got in trouble for actually wearing girl underwear underneath the cheerleading uniforms. Oh boy. My mom making gingerbread houses with graham crackers for my class. Huh. Me being too scared to ask for the trash can, so I chewed the same piece of gum for four hours. It was basically a liquid after school was over. The teacher with a swear jar where we filled it. If we filled it, we'd get a pizza party. That obviously backfired. Yeah, obviously. It should have been if you can keep it empty, then you get a pizza party. First day of class, my chemistry teacher fell out of his chair because he was so excited to tell us about the periodic table. Well, at least he was passionate. And he liked his job. That time when silly bands were super popular and I had a Scooby-Doo one I found on the street. I told everyone my dad got it off Amazon. Uh, I think being too scared to ask for the trash can, because that sounds like a mood. Pick a five-star meal. Cereal and orange juice mixed together. The cereal is chocolate and has marshmallows. I tried cereal and orange juice once and it wasn't actually that bad. I don't know why everybody gets so up in arms about that. The alluring gravy dripping from the dumpster behind the Mexican restaurant. That sounds like a meal for Spamton. And, and I don't deal that way. A fine salad of poison ivy, aloe vera, pine cones, and those tree flowers that smell like glue. I don't know which flowers you mean. Don't forget the ranch dressing. Ugh. Your mom. Good one. The blood of the innocent. Uh, two bagels. That sounds like me. Chicken boiled in NyQuil. Sleepy time dinner. Sonic the Hedgehog limited edition curry. Pizza on pineapple. Blech. A Red Bull mixed with NyQuil because you feel like fighting God today. No, I would lose. Two bagels. I'm sticking with it. Kids or no kids? Yes, kids. Pick a writing prompt. Oh boy. You're strapped to a table surrounded by cultists. If summon their demonic deity and are preparing to sacrifice you, you decide to go all in the only way out you have left. Make the demon an offer the cultist can't match. A dyslexic man does a deal with the devil and sells his soul to Santa. What does that look like? Does he like become an elf? In the future, sugar has been outlawed. You have one of the most illegal professions. Baker. I'm not a good baker. You're the world's most notorious supervillain and the heroes can't stop you. I mean, they could, but you don't technically do anything illegal. You're the spoiler and use your telepathy to read minds and ruin the ending of whatever someone's currently into. No! That's terrible! You're a student 400 years in the future who's just been assigned a project to study the trends of the early 2000s. In your research, you learn a horrible secret. The gods most of the world worships now started off as a trading card game known as Pokemon. I mean... A lot of people seem to worship them already. <laughs> you don't have an angel or a devil on your shoulder. You have an angry viking and a 50s housewife. No thank you. The hero disappears overnight and the only one who looks is the villain. Not their friends, not their family, not the news reporters or any of the people who claim to love them. Just the villain. Hmm. The galaxy is full of cute, fluffy, peaceful little aliens. Unfortunately, they all find humans terrifying, ni nightmarishly disgusting, or unfathomably evil by their standards. It's a problem, but humanity's desire to pet everything has always triumphed. That's true. 
Batman was spotted by paparazzi leaving the Wayne Manor, and the rumors spread that Batman and Bruce Wayne- What? <laughs> You're an author who signed up for a writing conference. Sitting at a table surrounded by deities, you realize you may have misunderstood what the advertisement meant by world building. Ooh. Yeah, I like that one. That would prove very interesting. Name a physical feature you find attractive. Oh boy. Okay, here we go. Big baby eyes. A cute laugh or an awkward one. Sharp teeth that look oh so yummy. <laughs> Broad shoulders, the perfect handlebars. That thick booty. <laughs> the cake. A slender and small waist, easy to wrap your arms around. Battle scars, enough set. A soft belly, the perfect pillow. That deep, deep, rich voice, the kind that makes you shiver. A long tongue. Ugh. Um, I am asexual, so I don't really find any of these, like, sexy per se, but in terms of aesthetic attraction, like, that looks, that looks interesting or appealing, even if not conventionally attractive. Maybe a slender waist. What soul type are you? Perseverance. Choose a lame superpower. The power to make someone's food slightly more or less saltier just by thinking of it. Done. Okay. <laughs> I've been prescribed salt for all my health issues. That would be just so much easier. <laughs> just, I can think of my food and make it saltier rather than having to get up and get the salt and like put a little bit at a time and it's still not salty enough and put a little more and it's still not salty enough and then just yeah that that would actually be a very convenient superpower uh let me look at the others just in case being able to talk to seagulls there are no seagulls where i live the power to be invisible when no one is looking at you so just normal <laughs> The ability to smell the future, being immune to paper cuts, the power of speaking in emojis, ugh, I'd prefer emoticons, the power to raise or lower the temperature of any room by one degree celsius, my temperature regulation is already garbage enough, the power of being super skilled at something but only when you really need to pee, no, the power of glowing but only during the daytime, being able to summon hiccups at will, no. Yeah, salty food. That's that's my jam. Favorite movie cliche. How come aliens only invade the US? There are so many other countries out there. Probably because the US is the most arrogant. <laughs> so the aliens are like, oh, we'll take you down a peg by invading you first. If the movie is in Paris, you can see the Eiffel Tower in every window. Every single one. Whenever they give the nerdy girl a makeover, all they really do is take off her glasses and put her hair down. That's true. If you fall off a building, don't worry, you'll always land in the dumpster. <coughs> Assassin's Creed. Whenever the hero fights a pack of villains, they always take their turn with the hero. They never gang up on them. The villain will always lift you by the throat. Always. When a guy is dreaming about his crush, and just as they're about to kiss, he wakes up to his dog licking his face. Why are jocks always the bad guys in high school movies? All these ladies fall on sprinting in six inch heels, like how? Yeah, I would just fall and die and be crippled. If anyone shoots at a car, it always explodes. My favorite out of these cliches? Um, the villain will lift you by the throat because I like watching them choke. <laughs> Not in a sexual way, but I like the suffering. <laughs> Which of these would you like the best as a gift? Oh yay! Gift giving! Is there food? A beautiful feather pen. A cute pastel coloring book. A sweet smelling basket. Oh, food. Inside is an assortment of cookies and cakes. All are topped with a small drop of white frosting. That does sound good. Oh, but pizza though. A pizza delivery man arrives at your door. He says the pizza has already been paid for. It's your favorite flavor. Ooh, how do you like your pizza? I like mine with cheese and black olives and onions. The rest is just superfluous. A handsome pendant necklace. The design is sleek and simple, making it match with just about anything. I'm not 
really a jewelry person that often. A cute little flower pot with an unknown plant inside it. It comes with instructions on how to properly care for it. A generous gift card to your favorite clothing store. I'm not really... I don't like the process of shopping. It's exhausting. A bouquet of mixed flowers, clearly freshly picked and hastily tied together. A USB drive mysteriously left on your doorstep. Inside is a playlist of songs you've never heard before but instantly love. Hmm. A simple letter inside your mailbox. On it is a rather steamy love confession. No, that would that would creep me out. I'm sorry, no. <laughs> I'll go with the cakes. Pick the deal breaker you think you can handle best. Having a short temper, being too overprotective, clingy behavior, keeping secrets, bad communicator, snobby behavior, or jealousy. Ooh. That's a tough one. I think I could handle my partner being overprotective because I like to feel protective. Sorry, I like to feel protected, but being too overprotective. Compared to the others, yeah, I think I could handle that one. Freebie, which boy is your favorite? Nope, I want a surprise. Sans Papyrus, Star, Honey. <laughs> <laughs> Red, Edge, Mal, Cash, Oak, Willow, Charm, Sugar, Lord, or Mutt, Wine, Coffee, Pop, Rhythm. That's a lot of people. Oh, boy. <laughs> ha. I'm scrolling past all these names, but my mind is back with... Back with Swap Papyrus. I, I, I have to pick him. I'm sorry. I can't help it. Tell me something funny, I could use the laugh. Okay. Um. Uh, I don't know why that was the first joke I thought of, but <laughs> that's it. Here we go. Who's it gonna be? Oh! Horror Swap Papyrus. I did not expect that. I mean, it is a Swap Papyrus, but Horror Swap. I don't have much experience with that particular universe. Basil is easily the shyest of the boys. He's pretty much mute when you first meet him, but will slowly build up to soft words. He has a soft temperament and is as sweet as sugar. He's a mother hen and likes seeing his significant other comfortable. A true softie. Oh, that's really nice. Not what I was expecting, but yeah, that's cute. I don't know what I was even expecting. I was just answering honestly. I had no idea who to expect. There were a lot of choices, but yeah, I think I'm satisfied. I do like Horror Tale and obviously I love Swap Papyrus, so I guess I get the best of both worlds. So yeah. If you're interested in taking the quiz, I'll leave it in the description. Tell me in the comments which of the boys has captured your heart, or what the quiz says about who you would be most compatible with. And also, just like, which one is your favorite in general? Which one do you want, and which one do you get? I'm interested to see. For now, I'm gonna leave it there. If you have any suggestions for other personality quizzes I might take, like for FNAF or another Undertale quiz, let me know. I hope you enjoyed. This was a lot of fun. <laughs>